Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And thou shalt show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty Saviour for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the dayspring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way all about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how long, how I long for all of you with compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that, you love, that you, your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless having produced a harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyfully. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only thee have we lived in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us the way of sustenance and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy own spirit. Merciful God, who didst send thy messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Amen. Have you seen this bumper sticker? It's the one that reads, Unlike Santa, Jesus loves you whether you've been naughty or nice. Now, I love seeing that one around this time of year. And of course, there's a subtext that it doesn't include. One that would read something like, Oh, and by the way, we've all been naughty. It's an important reminder. Jesus isn't Santa Claus. He doesn't divide us into clear-cut categories of nice children and naughty ones, rewarding one group and penalizing the other. And it's an especially important reminder in light of today's message. As we always do on this second Sunday of Advent, we focus our attention today on the person of John the Baptist. John, a second cousin of Jesus, was the Messiah's herald or forerunner, so to speak. He is the voice crying out in the wilderness foretold by the prophet Isaiah. And John is a pretty intense character. He's known to call the outwardly faithful of his time things like a brood of vipers and to warn them against the wrath that is to come. 
And as we heard in today's scriptures, John's appearing is equated with preparing the way of the Lord. His own father, Zechariah, says of him that he will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give the people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And here is where things can get complicated. The imagery of preparing the way of the Lord by leveling every mountain, filling every valley, and making the rough places smooth is beautiful. And it brings to mind thoughts of bringing justice to all the world's haunts of oppression and violence. And so it should. It's high time that the cry of people who have been shackled sometimes for generations in poverty and fear be heard and that something be done about it. Not to mention the cry of a planet that has had more than enough of the abuses that we humans heap upon it. But I would suggest that in the midst of this noble endeavor, we sometimes overestimate our ability to define a term like justice. What I mean is that we sometimes forget that Jesus, and hence his body, the church, is not Santa Claus. Christian anthropology is very clear on this point. There is no such thing as one category of people who are good by nature and another that is evil. There is no clear-cut division between naughty and nice. We all, without exception, fall short of the glory of God for which we were created. And we all, without exception, are eligible for that glory by means of the grace of God in Christ. It's way too easy to forget that and begin to think in our minds that we know how to judge others and hence own what justice really looks like. We've been doing it for millennia now. Take your pick of the categories. The good people are the Christians and everyone else is inherently evil. The good people are the poor and oppressed. Everyone else is inherently evil. The good people are those of certain colors, races, and nationalities, and the others are evil. And of course, as soon as we begin thinking like this, we begin to act like the body of Santa Claus rather than the body of Christ. Solutions are simple. We take things away from the naughty children and give them to the nice ones. But this is not the way of Christ, and it is not consistent with the witness of John the Baptist. If we had read just a little further than we did in Luke's Gospel, we would have heard a fascinating exchange. The crowds approach John the Baptist and ask him what they should do. He tells them quite simply that anyone with two coats or extra food must share with those who have none. Soldiers and tax collectors, arguably the most hated people in the region at the time, ask the same question and are told simply to do their work honestly and be satisfied with whatever gains they get, not seeking any more. Now at first, especially after such a fiery opening, these responses from John sound surprisingly understated. But contained with them is a profound truth. What God demands of us as means of preparing the way of the Lord 
is remarkably simple. We must be honest and show kindness and mercy. That's it. It's easy to think that it's the really massive acts and massive movements that are most effective in bringing our world closer to the vision of the kingdom of God. But I'm not so sure that the actual evidence backs that up. Sure, the big things are flashy, but in the end, do they really result in the necessary redistribution of things, both material and immaterial, that is needed to make sure that everyone can thrive? But simple acts of kindness and mercy, acts born of the knowledge that we are all sinners in the same boat and all in need of kindness and mercy, those are quite a different story. I cannot count the number of times that I have seen the power of this in action. I have seen marriages, friendships, and perhaps even lives saved by one unexpected act of forgiveness. I have seen seemingly indestructible hierarchies toppled by a single kind word. When we have a harder look at them, John's instructions aren't nearly as understated as they appear to be. He's telling us to do exactly what he told the crowds, the tax collectors, and the soldiers to do. Be honest and show kindness and mercy at every opportunity. And that's actually a task that demands a tremendous amount from us. Whom do we know who needs a coat or food? Time to share what we have. Where are we participating in systems that give too much food and comfort to one and not enough to another? Time to stop and change those systems. Where are we withholding forgiveness of debts, both material and immaterial? Time to cancel those. Is there anyone or anything from whom we are collecting, either directly or by participating in a system, more than we're due? It's time to stop. These are very simple instructions, but very, very difficult. If you're anything like me, about a hundred different things came to mind in just the last few seconds. But this is what it's all about. Kindness and mercy. This is how we right not only individual wrongs, but systemic ones. This is how we prepare the way of the Lord during this Advent season. And this is the way of Jesus. God in the flesh didn't come condemning whole categories of humanity while rewarding others. He came showing simple acts of kindness and mercy, culminating in the ultimate act of sacrificial love. And we, as his people, are called to do likewise.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church and the world, saying, Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Come, O Christ, and set us free. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both in their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Anglican Church of Burundi. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Andrew's Church in San Bruno and St. Ambrose Church in Foster City. In our local community, we pray for the well Christian community in Livermore. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation, for Yvonne, for Jennifer, Pierre, Maureen, and Kylie, for Don and Anne, as well as those in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, Taylor, and Drake. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Come to us, O Christ, and, and set, set us free. free. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy generous hand, thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy holy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And we most humbly beseech thee of good, thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Sorry. Angela, Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Carol, Kathy, Dave and Mary, Doris, Dottie S, Esteban, Helga, Helen, Janice and Bravo, James, Jennifer, Jim, John and Hiroko, Ben and Catherine, Kip, Lee, 
Lisa B. Laura, Marion, Marge B. Marsha R. Monty and Judy, Nick, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, Michael E. Robert, Sally, Tamara S. The Purcell Ordstad family, Father Ron Culmer and family, the Sherman family, the Payne family, the Thayer Moore families, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. At this time, you may add petitions and thanksgivings of your own. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. We also bless thy holy name for all the servants departed in this life, in thy faith and fear. We pray for Colin O, Corey C, Bernie S, Glennis P, Alex M, and Mark. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we thine unworthy, unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.